getting real close. I'll go ahead and, and say that uh, I'm Jamie Cope. I'm the, the, the manager of business development at the WVU Industrial Extension. Welcome everybody. Happy to have everybody on board with us today. Uh, Going to have some fun, talk about uh, some time management. Um, before we get started, just wanted to, to kind of give you a heads up on some of the other things that we have going on at the Industrial Extension, some other webinars. Um, on Earth Day, we're, we're going to talk about some Earth Day energy resources. We've got some great partners, AEP and some others, who uh, we're going to talk about ways to save energy and save money. So good stuff. Uh, drug and alcohol awareness, reasonable suspicion coming up as well. Um, we, we used to do regional uh, manufacturer roundtables in person, and we are so thrilled that maybe someday that's going to happen again. But for now, this next round is going to be done um, as, as a virtual event. So check the, check the website to check the regions and see which ones apply to you. And we'd love to have you join us for those. And then on May 6th, I'm going to be doing another presentation on sincere selling. So yeah, so this is me, Jamie Cope, the manager of business development at the WVU Industrial Extension. Uh, that's my contact information there. And that's not just up there for show. Would love to hear from you. Um, as would everybody on our team. We've got a great team and, and everybody's very approachable and we, we like to, to hear from, from you. Um, so a little bit about the WVU Industrial Extension before we get started here. Um, <clears throat> the WVU Ind Industrial Extension partners with small and medium-sized manufacturers in West Virginia to support the operational improvement and business growth. As part of West Virginia University, the Industrial Extension serves the university's land grant mission and is housed in the Statler College of Engineering and Mineral Resources. As West Virginia's affiliate to the NIST MEP National Network, the WVU Industrial Extension is part of a nationwide program of centers tasked with supporting and main supporting the manufacturing community. The unique arrangement provides the industrial extension the opportunity to support manufacturing, the manufacturing community from national, state, and local le level. Uh, the WVU Industrial Extension focuses on developing consulting services that reflect client needs, provide hands-on education, and work one-on-one -on -one with our clients to deliver practical solutions in the areas of workforce, occupational health and safety, management systems, operational improvement, advanced manufacturing, leadership development, and innovation and growth services. So uh, that's a really long explanation, but one of the things that, that it doesn't say in there that I would love to, to emphasize is we have a great team. We got a lot of really smart, fun people. Um, so never hesitate to reach out to us if you have a manufacturing question. We would love to talk to you about it. Good stuff. Um, but what we're here to talk about today is time management. We're gonna talk about time management, how to manage our time. Um, <clears throat> I like to start out with this. Um, just so you know, I am not the world's leading expert on time management. Uh, so hopefully we don't have a bunch of people drop off right now. But um, just wanted to throw this up there to say, this is a process that I'm working on. It's, it's something, it's like a continuous improvement process. We just need to keep working on it and working on it and working on it. it. You're never done. You never get that, oh, I'm a time manager, time manager, check, done. So just know that uh, you're going to see some stuff in here that you're going to be like, I don't think so, or hey, I could do that better. And you will be right. Uh, would love to hear from you because we're all a little bit different. Would be good to incorporate some of your ideas into this as well. So I'm just going to present some of the things that work for me. All right. So I want to start out by talking about Michael Jordan. Uh, whether you're a basketball fan or not, you probably uh, recognize who that was. Uh, the greatest basketball player of all time. I'm happy to uh, debate that with you offline later if you want to. But uh, really interesting guy. Lots of great things to talk about whenever it comes to Michael Jordan. But what I want to talk about today was in the 1992 finals when he hit six three-pointers in the first half. Um, an amazing accomplishment. If you're aware of uh, Michael Jordan's career, he was an amazing dunker. He was a great passer. He was fantastic at defense. Three-point shooter, eh, well, he was all right. Not really what he was known for. So this was really a, a, a really surprising accomplishment. And he also that day gave us the shrug, right? The thing that you do whenever you do something that's absolutely amazing and miraculous and you want to act like, eh, I did that, right? It was pretty cool. I did that. Um, again, fun, fun stuff. Uh, Michael Jordan was, 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 uh, was great, the greatest. So 
there is no doubt in my mind that when Michael Jordan was hitting those three pointers in the first half, that the announcers, people in the stands, people who reported it in the newscast later, they all said he was in the zone, right? He was there. He was locked in. He was between me and you, um, kind of like, is there anything that you? So, um, so what Michael Jordan was able to do, he was, he was in the zone, right? Everybody said that everybody knows what I'm talking about, or I think you would know what I'm talking about. It's when everything is in focus, right? So have you ever been in the zone, right? So let's think about that. Have you ever been in the zone? Um, this is a picture of me from several years ago. I used to actually have hair. And uh, one of the things that, yeah, we think about in the zone is, is athletics, right? And just, you know, to be honest, whenever I'm running, usually what I'm thinking is, ow, this hurts. And oh, no, there's a hill up there. And I wonder what I'm having for dinner tonight. But occasionally, I will get in the zone. And I will continue to run. And all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, wow, I'm at the end. And oh, look, that was a good time, right? Everything's really focused. Everything comes together. So think about times maybe when you were in the zone. And yes, in case you're wondering, that little girl did beat me. Um, so <clears throat> that's in the zone whenever you think about sports. But in your work life, have you ever been in the zone, right? Have you ever been in those times when you're working, you're working, you're working, and all of a sudden, a whole lot of time has passed and you got a whole lot done? And it was like, oh, wow, that's cool. Um, hopefully your, your in the zone moment doesn't, didn't happen like several of mine um, where you get that call and it's like, oh yeah, dear, I've got a few things I wanna wrap up here at work and then I'll be home for dinner. And then you get the call like three hours later, hey, where are you? Um, hopefully you're, you're, you're better at managing your time than that. But I think you know what I'm talking about, right? You get in that point where you're so focused and everything just clicks, right? So, <clears throat> Uh, one of the things that we need to, to, to try to do, oh, I'm locked. There we go. Oops, too far. Okay, so let's do a, a little what if here. All right, so what if Michael Jordan's playing in the 1992 playoffs? He's coming down the court. He's hit a three-pointer. Let's say he's hit two three-pointers. He's, he's getting there, right? Everything's going well. And then all of a sudden, this happens. Oh, wait. He's, he's, he's got an email. And uh, oh, wow, look, while I'm checking my email, Facebook's blowing up. I must be having a great, great game. And then, you know, then he checks his emails in and oh, wow. Gee, I hope our associate director isn't on this call. Sorry if you had to hear it this way, Dave. But yeah, we were looking for uh, anyway. Um, and then, you know, then he gets a text. Hey, want to have dinner after the game? So so if that would have happened, if he would have had all of those distractions, do you think he would have hit all six of those three pointers? And, and granted, I mean, this is ridiculous because Facebook wasn't even around in 92, but, but I don't think. But anyway, do, do you think that that would have happened? Well, of course not. But then why do we expect to stay in the zone at work with all of those distractions as well, right? So distractions are the enemy of being in the zone. And yeah, I'm going to quit doing that now because it does get annoying. But it's obvious though, right? If you are being distracted, you're gonna be less productive. You're not gonna be able to get that special kind of work where you get a lot of things done in a short amount of time. So what can we do to stay in the zone? And a lot of what I'm gonna be talking about now is gonna be uh, very specific to things that we can try. Um, let's go ahead and, and launch a poll here. Um, and and no, this, this, this isn't, uh, uh, a weighted question at all. This this isn't leading you into anything. We're not going to hold this against you if you answer it wrong. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, multitaskers. We got uh, we got a lot of people that say they're multitaskers out there. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's good. You want to go ahead and share that with us, there, Mark. Share those results. Looks like we've got about. Uh, 82 percent uh, at that point that, that have said that they consider themselves to be multitaskers. Well, I, uh, I hate to, uh, to break it to you, but, uh, oops. but uh, multitasking is a lie. <laughs> uh, there have been multiple studies, and if you start to uh, uh, um, look at how things are, are, are being done, 
it's easy to see that you're really not as productive as you could be when you're multitasking. Uh, some of the studies that I was reading about even implied that people who think that they're good at multitasking are actually less productive than everybody else. So um, I really liked this quote uh, by Steve Ozel. Um, multitasking is merely an opportunity to screw up more than one thing at a time. So yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm afraid I'm gonna have to agree with him. And from personal experience, that's uh, actually been the case. Um, <clears throat> this guy from Stanford, uh, Anthony Wagner, did a study on heavy media multitaskers having more difficulty staying on task and returning to task when attention has lapsed. Uh, so one of the things that, that's kind of important to notice about this and, and that, that is a, a big point is this returning to task part of it. And if you think about your, 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 your work mode as riding a bike and having some momentum, right? And you're in your work mode and then all of a sudden somebody comes up to your desk and they talk to you for two minutes and then they leave, all right? So if you were tracking the amount of time that you were working, it would look like, okay, I just lost two minutes, no big deal. But really what happens when you're working, you get into the zone, you get going, and then that interruption is like riding a bike and you've just stopped. And then when that person leaves and you, you, you get back into the zone, you've got to start back from zero and get back up to speed. And you might even have to go uphill at that point, right? So, so <clears throat> distractions, they, they stop our momentum and they're horrible at leading to rabbit holes. How many times have you been, we'll say writing a Word document, something like that, and you get a distraction of a phone call? Now, generally, you don't continue to work on your, whatever it was you were, you were working on um, <clears throat> while you're on the phone call. Usually what you do is you're going to start clicking other places, and that leads to rabbit holes. And they don't even have to be attractive rabbit holes. We'll go down them. <clears throat> so you could do things like, uh, you know, you're, you're typing on the phone, you start clicking, and then all of a sudden it's like, well, is Baby Yoda going to be part of the MCU? You know, I got to know. So you start clicking on that. And the next thing you know, the phone call's over, and you're still down that rabbit hole, and you're doing things that you really shouldn't be doing. And, and rabbit holes aren't just time wasters either. I mean, there, there are certain emails and things that we go down those rabbit holes that, that they're work related and they're productive, but they're maybe not what we should be spending our time on right then. So got to watch out for those rabbit holes. So staying in the zone, uh, avoid multitasking, right? You got to avoid multitasking if you're going to stay in the zone. All right, let's launch another poll here. And this is mostly just out of my curiosity. I, I, I found some people were using paper that kind of surprised me, but I manage my time with an Outlook calendar, um, some other electronic calendar, a paper calendar, I don't manage my time, or maybe use something else. Let's see what people come up with. Wow, yeah, looking good. Looking like like uh, kind of what I suspected. We're we're very heavily weighted on uh, Outlook. Um, so yeah, it looks like about seventy one percent on Outlook. That's that's seems to be the tool of choice for a lot of us. Um, it's interesting that uh, we've got a few others on there. I'd like to see hear what those are sometime. And uh, yeah, paper calendars doesn't surprise me that that's number two. Uh, my boss talks about how she still uses paper calendars all the time, and I I, I can see the appeal of that. But yeah, I'm, I'm an Outlook guy as well. Um, all right. So. What can we do? What can we do to uh, stay in the zone? And one of the things that we can do is we can block your calendar to make time to be in the zone. Now, if there, there's going to be a large percentage of you that are going to be like, "Duh, Jamie," but but for me, I always put things on my calendar like calls or appointments or things that that I have to do. And for years, that's all that would ever show up on my calendar are things. That, that required me to interact with somebody else usually is what it was. But what I have found, and, and I'm sure some of you have found this as well, is that if you can block off some time to work on certain things, 
to time that you're going to stay in the zone. This is the only thing that I'm going to work on during this time. So you can see, I mean, this is my calendar for today. Um, you know, got to send a reminder email to folks so that they'll show up to my webinar. Got a meeting with Smooth Ambler, but then I'm going to have to do some writing. And if I don't put a two hour block of time on my calendar where I don't let anything else creep in and I don't, you know, it's kind of a rabbit hole free zone, I guess you'd say. If I don't do that, it's going to be very difficult for me to get that done. I'm going to, I'm going to be bopping around and, and, and not able to focus on that. So if I've got something like, said, like writing or something like that, I schedule the time to be specifically in the zone while I'm, I'm, I'm there. Again, maybe you've done that before. That was something that was unfortunately newer to me than it should have been here recently. Um, another thing that I found, and, and to be brutally honest, I would not have done this had it not been an assignment, but I was given the, the, the opportunity to track my time in 15 minute increments. So, um, and, and, and that's a horrible way to stay in the zone, by the way. So, so just uh, do that one or two days and, and as an exercise, but it's not something to do every day. But <clears throat> track your time, see where you are actually spending your time. I, like I said, I would not have done that if it wasn't an assignment, but I learned a lot by doing that. I was surprised. And, and we do timesheets as, as our group anyway. <clears throat> but uh, with this, I was able to, uh, to, to, to kind of see where I spend my time. And then I compared that to my calendar. So I tracked my time to figure out where I actually spent it. And then I looked at my calendar to see where I thought I was spending my time. And they didn't line up as closely as I expected. So it was, it was an interesting exercise and I learned a lot. I, I probably need to go back and do it again. It's been a while since I've done it. Um, I learned things like, uh, if I block something off in the zone more than two hours, I'm fooling myself. Um, I can say I'm going to spend four hours working on something, but that just isn't going to happen. My mind is going to wander. I'm going to drift off. I'm going to start checking emails. I'm going to do something else during that four hour period of time. So for me, if I have four hours of work that I have to get done in a day on a special task, I do two, two, two hour blocks. And that's, that's, uh, that just works better for me because otherwise, I just can't can't stay in that zone that long. It's 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 just not <laughs> my brain isn't wired that way. Maybe yours is, and you won't know until you track your time and see where you spend it. I I, I think about that a lot too. Is uh, we got a lot of manufacturers on this call, obviously. So, um, you know how many things you produce, or at least you should, and you know whether you can make that better or worse based on the the statistics that you have. If you're not measuring you're not gonna know where you are and whether you can make it better or not. And it's the same thing with your time. Uh, let's do another poll here. <coughs> Excuse me. How many emails do you get in a day? As I suspected too, this one looks like it's gonna be all over the board, uh, which is good. Uh, you know, I mean, it's uh, depends a lot on, on what kind of, uh, what kind of, of work day you, you're set up to have. Some, some people are like, email, what's email? Oh, I wish that was the case, right? But uh, yeah, so here we go. Uh, looks like most folks are between 26 and 50 emails a day. I, I think I'm just a little, I'm in that next category up, but it looks like there's a lot of people in that category too. Um, and uh, if you think about that in terms of problem solving, Right. And then again, let's look at this in a manufacturing standpoint. Like, like if you have a, a problem that that uh, is is a, a huge problem and you can fix that by 50 percent or, or 20 percent, uh, let, let's say it's a, a problem that costs you five hours a day and you can save it by you can knock 20 percent off of that and you save yourself an hour. That's great. If you've got a problem that's 10 minutes a day and you solve it by 100 percent, you still haven't done as much good. So emails are a big problem. And uh, we'll even get into this a little bit more. The average office worker receives 120 emails a day, according to this study. Um, the average uh, office worker sends out 40 work-related emails a day and receives 90 of them each day. Okay, a little different maybe, but um, the average time that a recipient spends reading an email increased from 13.4 seconds in 2018, up from 11.1 seconds in 2016. 
Uh, Adobe surveyed a thousand American workers. On average, they spend more than five hours per day checking email. Okay, so if you followed along with those numbers much at all, you saw that they didn't really line up that well. I mean, they, they didn't, didn't uh, totally jive, but it is obvious that emails are a problem and they are a big problem, right? I think everybody on here, whether you get 25 emails a day or 200 emails a day, you know that you're spending a very large amount of your time wading through those, trying to figure out what, 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 uh, <clears throat> what to do with them. Um, and it was at this point that I decided that maybe some of you were getting a little lost. I wanted to, to, to show you a, a better representation of what's happening. So we've got you, we've got email distractions, we've got a barrier between something to protect you. Vroom, and then we get this. Pew, pew, pew. So just so you know, I got absolutely no enjoyment out of that whatsoever. I, I did that for you so that you could follow along and better understand email distractions. I'm, I'm just a giver like that. Um, so, so what can we do about emails, right? What is it that we can do to, to, to make emails less of a burden, right? Um, <clears throat> one of the things that I did, and it was hard, I turned off my email alerts. I don't know if you guys get those little blinky alerts in the bottom of your screen every time you get a new email, but that is a huge distraction and it definitely keeps you out of the zone. Um, Dave Carrick, who works with us, had a great description. He said, I'm like a little dog. He said, I see that thing come up and it's like, oh, wow, I need it. Somebody wants my help. I'm important. I need to help them now. And if you go through your day responding to that instant uh, you know, alert that you've got an email, you're never gonna get anything else done, right? Because we looked, several people had almost 100 emails a day, right? So 100 times a day, you're getting distracted by something that may or may not be important to be handled right away. And um, if, if you haven't seen The Social Dilemma, uh, it's a documentary, it's on Netflix right now. You will be terrified, but it talks a lot about how we react, you know, with the endorphins and things whenever those alerts come up. So if you can turn off those alerts, I highly, highly recommend doing that. It's going to make your day flow a lot better. Um, another thing that I did, and again, total honesty here, um, I scheduled time to read and respond to emails every day. And in total honesty, I am still struggling with this. I know it's, 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 kind of like eating broccoli. I know that it's what I'm supposed to do. Sometimes I just have trouble doing it. But if you schedule time during your day to read and respond to emails, it's going to keep you from, from just hopping around the whole time and, and going down those rabbit holes that we talked about earlier. And um, it, it is, it's, 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 it's very difficult to, to do sometimes. Um, if, if you're like me, I fell into these and still do. This is where I struggle. Like, Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm writing something, I'm finished. Now, instead of moving on to the next task, what do I do? I check my email. I get up, I go get a drink of water, I come back. I don't jump into what I was working on whenever I left to go get a drink of water, I check my email. So if you set up these times where you can schedule to look at your email, and notice I put read and respond, because here's another thing that I was doing, and maybe some of you guys can relate to this, I would get that little alert and I would look at it and I would be like, oh, all I have to do is say yes to this and I'm done. And I would respond and hit yes. And then I would get another alert and I'm like, oh, that's going to take some time. I'm going to leave that one unread until later and then I'm going to get to it. Oh, I can do this one fast. Oh, well, that one's going to take a while. I'm going to save it to later. So you really don't knock that much off of your list because you've still got to go back and deal with those bigger emails. So scheduling time to read and respond to email every day is something that was really effective for me. Um, I did this presentation for our group a couple of months ago, and um, it, it, it's great. And, and one of the things that, that I was, I was going to make a point that if Stacy sent me an email in the morning, as long as I responded by the afternoon, it would be okay. So I asked her, I'm like, how long does it take how much time do I need to respond to your emails? And, and 
Stacy, my my cool boss, said, as long as you respond to my emails within 24 hours, we're good. Okay. So your boss may not be as cool as mine or your clients, however your 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 situation functions. But but have you asked? Have you figured out what a proper response time is? Because if it's if it is once a day, maybe you can get by with checking your email once a day. Um, I check mine three times a day. I think I think that that's you know client wise that's that's much more important. But she was able to <clears throat> to set this precedent and and you know the way that we communicate. If she wanted to get a hold of me sooner or somebody on our team wanted to get a hold of me sooner, they're going to call or text, right? So <clears throat> the email figuring out where the emails were in my world's priority was a really big deal, right? And maybe you need to check on that and see, you know, may, may, maybe your, your expectations uh, for your, your clients or, or your, your supervisors is a little different, but this is a good thing to know. Or maybe if you're a supervisor, you need to tell your, your, the people who work under you what, what, uh, what the expectation is. So, so yeah, so not everybody's boss is as cool as mine, obviously, but, uh, but it's worth checking out to see what's acceptable. Um, oh, boomer alert. So one of the things that, that I did whenever I was setting up the schedule, I, I struggled with this and I, I, I do, I feel like a big boomer on this, but, but if you put the, the, the time on your Outlook calendar and people share their calendar with you, uh, it might cause a problem because I didn't want people to not schedule a call or a meeting with me every day at 11 o'clock. That seemed kind of ridiculous because, yeah, I shouldn't be tied up. So I tried several different ways to uh, to get it set up. What I ended up doing, just full disclosure, I used my A L E X A. I'm not going to say that 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 word because she'll want to talk to me. But I used that to send me a, a, an alert every day at certain times that says, "Hey, check your email," and it's that pleasant little voice of hers too, which is nice. So, um, so another thing that we did to kind of manage this email issue was we set up some internal email rules in our group. Um, one of them was, uh, we have a very polite group. We have a very chatty group. We're very, we're very just generally nice people. Um, and we spend a lot of time sending emails saying, thank you and you're welcome. And in an effort to get that number down from 100 to 50 or whatever your number of emails is, you may wanna talk to the people who you interact with the most and say, look, I know you're a good person. You do not have to tell me you're welcome whenever we're done <laughs> if, if I say thank you. And you don't even have to tell me thank you. I know you read your emails, we're good. You know, it's, it's, it's fine. So again, something that you can try to decide internally, maybe it'll work for you, maybe not, who knows. Um, we adopted, and we're, we're still working on this. Some of these things are, are works in progress, but internally we use uh, an NRN, no response needed, uh, in the email. So you could say, uh, you know, FYI, here's some information. And a lot of times the person on the other end would feel obligated to respond with cool or thanks for letting me know or whatever. But if you put that NRN in there, then they know, oh, it's, it's not a big deal. You don't have to, to respond to this. I know you read your email. I just wanted you to know this, right? So it's, again, just trying to, to, to save some of that email traffic. Um, another thing that we have done internally is we have used some subject line designations to, to uh, indicate what the email is about. Uh, it may be a Dropbox. Uh, if the email is pertaining to Dropbox, we make sure that that's in the subject. Another one that, that I, I actually should have put on here is action required. If I'm looking through my emails and I see action required, it means, okay, I need to jump on this and get this done. Somebody's waiting for me to get something to them. Um, that's been really helpful. And it's also helpful whenever you do a search later, right? To see, you know, oh, what was it that we were talking about with Dropbox? And, and it's all right there in the subject comes up. It's very nice. Um, <clears throat> oh, but one thing that we did, our group, uh, we're really close, but we're all really far apart. We're, we're all, we all work from our homes and we, 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 stay uh, in touch. A lot of that is through email. And because we're all in our homes, we don't get that water cooler time that, that a lot of people get in offices. And I don't know if, if we're just jealous of people who get to do that or whatever, but sometimes fun emails start happening and there's a lot of back and forth. And we made a decision within our office that 
those were worth the time that was wasted. I'm doing air quotes in case you can see me. That was wasted doing that. So we made sure that we did not stop the fun because we felt like that was an important part of our communication. So um, it, there's a fine line there between filling up somebody's email box with junk and having a good time. And we 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 tend to want to have a good time. So again, that's something that you'd have to turn determine uh, internally. Um, the to do list. I don't know. <clears throat> how successful you guys have been with to-do list. I have struggled with to-do list pretty much all my life. I, I The post-it note thing is one thing that I've done that gets really gangly and then they lose their tackiness and they fall on the floor and you don't know where they are. You know, you miss that really important call. Um, I've done the, the marker board thing. Um, there, there, there's lots of different ways to manage a to-do list. But one of the things that I have found recently, and this is, again, we're, we're all different. This is what works for me is to incorporate the to-do list into my calendar. And I use it like the all-day events. I always make mine yellow if it's stuff that I have to do. And these are things that are not uh, time sensitive as far as what time it gets done during the day, but I put them on my calendar as an all-day event. And it has been very helpful. For one thing, um, if, if I get it done, I change it from yellow to blue, just makes me feel good, makes me feel like I've checked something off that physical, you know, check it off the list. Um, also, having what you need to do on your calendar helps you plan. Uh, you know, if you say, oh, well, I'm going to do that on Thursday, and then you look and Thursday, I'm out visiting clients all day Thursday, I'm not going to be able to get to that. So can I move it to Friday? Or do I need to move it up to Wednesday? So having your to do list in your calendar in one place for me has been really, really helpful. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I just think that, that this is just a, a good way to, to manage it. Now, maybe this wouldn't work at all for you. I mean, some of you guys don't even use Outlook, so I, I would get that this would be a problem for you. But for me, this has been a really, really good uh, management tool. Um, oh, and another thing too, if you don't get the things done on your to-do list, you physically move them to another day. Um, at the end of the day, I look at the, the things that are in yellow at the top of my calendar. And I, I designate them to other days in the week. And uh, there's something that's kind of tactile and satisfying about that as well. So just a, a, a tip, maybe, maybe it'll help you, maybe not. Um, <clears throat> another thing that, that was very interesting and, and our, our, my boss, uh, Stacy gave a nice presentation on this. We could do a whole webinar on an Eisenhower matrix. I've heard them called other things too, but, but I like the Eisenhower matrix. Um, but you break, what you do into quadrants, important, urgent, not urgent, not important. And if you've done that, that time tracking exercise where every 15 minutes you, you track what you're doing, if you go back and you start placing those things into those quadrants, you might be really interested in what you learn. Um, where, where are you spending your time, right? And obviously, something that is not urgent and not important. We wanna get those things as far away from us as possible. Um, and it seems like, you know, you would think that, well, then urgent and important is where we wanna spend all of our time. Well, no, that's not where we wanna spend all of our time. That's, those are the things that we wanna knock off our to-do list first. But if you look at this important and not urgent quadrant, I've learned a lot about, about that. Um, vision, mission, planning, clarifying values. Um, when I first started, at the industrial extension a little over a year ago. Um, I, I started, I, I put actually on my calendar, a thing I call it big think on Thursdays. I spend a half an hour thinking about our organization and how it could be better. I get away from my computer, I get away from everything. And I'd, I'd usually do bring a, a something to write on and a, a, a something to write with. But I think about big picture stuff. What is, what's, what's our biggest problem right now? What should we do to solve that? And uh, to be honest, the first few times I did it, I did not tell my cool boss, Stacy about it because I'm like, she's going to think I'm just going up and taking a nap or something. But I finally did. I, I, I told her, I'm like, look, I'm spending time in this quadrant too. I'm spending time thinking about this stuff. And here is what I have come up with. And I started telling her some of the stuff that I, I come up with. And instead of her reaction being, gee, Jamie, maybe you should spend more time in quadrant one, She's like, more of that, please. Those, those, those are good, good ideas. That's the kind of thinking that we need to move things forward. So 
Um, just something, I mean, maybe, maybe it's something you have to do on your own time, depending on, on how cool your boss is or, or what your situation is, obviously. But, uh, but that time in quadrant two is, I think, just in general in a work environment is the most neglected, we'll say. Um, I think that it's one of those things that, that we don't put value on the, the big picture sometimes. And spending time in that area will save us a lot of time in the other areas. And, and it certainly has with, with me and, and what I'm doing um, at the industrial extension. So like I said earlier, we're all very different, right? So some of these things are gonna be like, oh, I'm way past that, I'm doing things better than that. Other things, hopefully you got something out of it. It's like, oh, wow, I'll have to give that a try. But the point is that if you're not working on it, it's not gonna get better, right? So you got to try some things. You got to see what works for you. You got to step in there and, and watch a YouTube video on Outlook calendars and tips and tricks for them or things like that. If you're not making it better, it's not going to get any better. So you have to work on it. And that's, you know, one of the things that I want to say, you know, you know, like I said, we're all different. Some of these things were probably not helpful at all. Hopefully something was. Um, I, I wish I would have had a picture of a snowflake for this, right? Because we're all different. But uh, that's uh, that that's most of what 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 I've got for you now. Oops, wrong way. Um, just to to recap, um, distractions are the enemy, right? We got to stay away from distractions so we can stay focused and in the zone. We got to schedule time to be in the zone. If we're going to stay in the zone, we got to schedule our time there. <clears throat> um, we need to work to reduce emails and time spent on emails. I think even, even those folks that, that were in the 25 or less emails will agree that less time with emails is better. So let's work on that. Um, organize and prioritize your to-do list. Figure out what's important, spend your time there. And uh, Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player of all time. So those are the recaps there. Uh, at this point, I'm going to ask, does anybody have any questions that they would like to ask? I think hopefully we've got some stuff going on in the chat there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and throw up my contact information. And again, that's not up there for show. I would enjoy hearing from all of you if you've got some, some input or something that, uh, something, a technique that has worked for you. Given the, the interest in this, congratulations, you guys. We had um, 100 people register for this. That's the first time we've ever gotten into the triple digits. I'm not going to take credit for that. We've had such great presentations in the past that we get a nice uh, following, a lot of repeat folks coming in. So uh, it's the great presentations that have gone on before this one that have kind of built that audience up. But uh, but yeah, we, 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 we will probably do this again because there was so much interest. So I'm going to need some new material. So tell me what's working for you. Tell me what, uh, what, what you like about uh, time management and, and how you're handling it. So Mark, I'm gonna quit rambling for a second and let you tell me some questions that folks are asking. Yeah, so uh, there's a lot of great comments. Uh, oh, cool. I, I'm gonna throw in my two cents real quick. One Please. thing that I found with regard to uh, email that was an issue in a, in a previous role is I would get copied into an email after there had been you know, 10, 20, 30 emails. So then I had, I found myself having to read that entire thread, trying to understand what's going on. Sure. Sure. So and, what and I ask of our team, I asked the team from now on summarize for me, if I don't need to read it all, you know, <laughs> let's, let's summarize what the thread says or say, you don't need to read everything below right here. Just, you know, here's the question. And, and the flip side of that too, sometimes you're emailed on the chain early. And then the conversation goes a whole different direction and you still get them, right? And it's like, yeah, right. take me off, please. <laughs> yeah, right, no, right. I know exactly where you're coming from. Absolutely. Uh, so interestingly, Sherry Brown made a, a comment, an observation that, you know, about multitasking that um, a lot of companies put that in their job description. They want multitaskers. <laughs> uh -huh. And that's absolutely valid. Um, now, Katie mentions that uh, she likes Panda Planner, which I'm not familiar with, but it sounds either. warm and fuzzy. So, okay, Panda Planner. Okay, yeah, I'll check into that. Thank you. Yeah, it might be something we want to have a look at. Um, let me see here. Uh, some positive comments about your NRN and 
Christina Massey mentioned that she uses in the subject line EOM for end of message. If, if it's something very brief, they just put it in the subject line so you don't actually have to open the email. You see that the question or comment was in the subject and it's that's all there is to it. Yeah, Christina's a smart lady, we should listen to her. <laughs> that's a good idea. Although uh, James Beakley mentions that some of the acronyms, you know, EOM, immediately makes him think end of month as opposed <laughs> to end of message. So uh, let's see. Yeah, so he also asked about Panda Planner, you know, okay. what is that? Sure. So maybe maybe we can figure that one out. Um, Lisa Jones asked, do you use time, uh, time blocks to do and to-do list to do outcomes or impact tracking? To do, uh, let's see, do I, do I, to, well, sort of, we, we, we certainly track the time that we spend on a project, so we can track how many hours it takes to get the outcome that we want, yes, right, I mean, because in some cases, our, our services are billable hours, right, so that certainly would be a factor on that, and, and, and even when it's not, I guess one, th one of the things that I learned whenever I tracked my time was it takes me a lot longer to do X, Y, Z than I thought it did. And it takes me less time to do some of these other tasks than I thought it did. So, so I can adjust the amount of time for the outcome because, I, because I'm monitoring how effective I am with my time. I hope that answers the question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Sherry also asked, will we be sharing the presentation? And yes, we will. Yeah, yeah. Um, you're, we you're recording early next week. Um, and the, the slide deck as well. And uh, Jamie Lynn points out that I faux pod and I call I called her James instead of Jamie Lynn. So <laughs> I apologize for that. Uh, I don't read so good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see, any other comments or questions here? That... A, lot of, a lot of good comments. Uh, Time blocking, great idea. Uh, Lisa Jones mentions that she is uh, guilty of not doing it and needs to do more of it. Uh, I agree. I need to yeah, do more yeah, of that. That's a big duh for me, right? It's like, I, I have a calendar that has my work hours on it. Why am I not filling it up with the work that I'm doing? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm really bad about that too. I, I, don't, I don't block a lot of things out um, and I should. See, uh, Zachary Carrier mentioned that he was late to the time management meeting. So, <laughs> yeah, I had a few people who said they didn't have time to attend the time management meeting. So. <laughs> and uh, some appreciation for for doing the the session. Um, I think everybody enjoyed it. So, great job, Jamie. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Again, the, that contact information isn't up there for me. I, I already know it. So, if if you're looking for that, uh, definitely reach out to me. Enjoy hearing from you. And we will do it again. Uh, sincere Selling is coming up in, in early May. So i uh, going to do that one as well. I'm going to have some fun with it. And maybe Katie can share some information with you about uh, Panda Planner. Yeah. And uh, if you're still there, Katie, I think you are. So yep, she says she'd love to do that. So <laughs> you can look forward to that coming. All right. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. And uh, look forward to talking to you soon. All right, everybody have a great day.